Access with Danny Zalesko and Tim Richards. Did it even occur to you when you were recording that, that it was going to take on that life, that mysterious thing that Electric Ladyland and Jimi Hendrix did after he died at such a young age? Um, I mean, he had so much more to do and so much more to, oh, yeah. to write. I, I think he was to, talking about doing something with Miles Davis yeah. around the time that he passed. Yeah. Um, Which would have been just. Mm, well, that would have made Carlos green with envy. Because, <laughs> you know, Carlos is a Miles fan. Oh, like, really? Big time. Uh, okay. yeah. Who is I am English and I came to America when I was 23. The point is, up until then, London, through the whole 60s and that whole period, it was like, it was, the only other place I can liken it to was New York back in, you know, when Regines and 54 and all that was still there and 42nd Street was still some trash clubs and stuff. It was just a great time. It was just unbelievable. And the thing about it in England is that everybody was there because that was the only music place. That was the music center of the country, unlike America where, you know, you had... L.A., San Francisco, Detroit, Nashville, Philadelphia, um, Alabama, Muscle Shoals, all that stuff. Um, England, you had one place. Basically, that's where, and all the studios were there. And then everybody, there were a number of semi-private clubs that we would all frequent, Blazes, Bag of Nails and stuff, Scotch of St. James. I mean, I saw, I think, Scotch when I went down there for a drink, it was in Clapton was up there on with the band, the little band. Clapton was up there jamming with Wilson Pickett. Um, <laughs> and and I, th I think it might have been the same club. Again, I was in there one night, and Chaz Chandler came in with this tall, skinny black guy with this frizzed out hair, and Levi's little Levi jacket came in the club. And, and <laughs> And then he gets this, got up on stage with the band. <laughs> and so before he'd ever done anything, this is when Chaz first brought him to England. Nobody even knew about it. And he got up and I started playing. And I was like, oh shit, fuck. I better, I, you know what? I really should look for another instrument. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was that, you know, you knew right there. It was just, you know. And that's what Chaz did when he first brought him over to get the industry, you know, to get the biz all jacked up. He, that's what he did. He took him around those clubs at night and just threw him up. But which was all music business people. That's he basically all was in there. Well, um, that had to be magical. Well, and, and, and that's that's when the music business people were young enough to go out at night without <laughs> without a babysitter. <laughs> right. And right. then I just you know, and then I walked into the, I think it was you could go in there's you know and there'd be Lennon or the be Cup of the Stones or whatever band was there was always somebody around and he was sitting alone at a table and I just went and sat down and started talking to him and he was a big fan of traffics and that's how it started and then I just had times with him uh, in his apart you know playing records times hanging out and <clears throat> that's where we uh, we we uh, that's where he for watchtowers when we went to some friends, some girl that he knew, partnered. And they said, you know, there was some of the pretty things there. There was a band called The Pretty Things. Love them. There was uh, Viv, uh, Viv Prince was the drummer. <laughs> the drinks were spiked. Everybody was stoned, of course, mostly on psychedelics. And she had an advanced copy of John Wesley Harding. You know, me and Jimmy just, I don't know, we probably just smoked a fucking bunch of hash. And, put it on and we're listening to it. And I, something must have caught his attention, you know, with Watchtower. I was in the studio with him. We went there, I, don't know, I, I can't even remember. I wish I had better memory for this stuff. You know, but we went, we were in the studio, there was me, there was Chad, there was Mitch. There was no, the, the other part, the other thing that was happening at the time, believe it or not, was the traffic, I was, I think it was in between, I think it was after the first album. And there was a rift going on with Jimmy and Noel Ben. No Redding? Uh, no Redding, sorry. No Redding. And um, so he was seriously, we were seriously talking about me taking Noel's place on bass. 
So that's how I finished up, you know, things like that. That's kind of how, how we, it had gotten with us two. And so I went to the studio to go and cut the track. And uh, me, Mitch, him, and Brian Jones. Brian was there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brian's, a, Brian's totally fucked up, sitting in a chair in a corner. And, <laughs> and, uh, and Brian, I, I knew Brian a little bit. He and I would go to this great tender Indian restaurant one occasionally. And that intro to that goddamn thing, the way he did it, man, it yeah. just, you know, I may as well have been a fucking moron. I just, <laughs> trying to get that timing down on an intro took me forever. God bless him, man. He had the patience. But the track was just, its no matter where anybody says, it was not cut at Electric Ladyland. It was cut at Olympic Studios. Trust me. I was there with the whole thing. Me and him and Mitch, you know, that the drums and... Me with the twelve string and Jimmy with the six string acoustic, just doing this. Who ended up doing bass? Jimmy. Jimmy. He did it on most of that album. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, that's, that's him. So I was there. So that's how the track was laid down: just acoustic guitars and, and Mitch. And it's, then Jimmy put the bass on it, and then uh, and then he put the all the lead stuff on it. It's weird with you know easy. with Hendrix. And then Brian was came came. Conscious enough to put this 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 thing on there that's in there. I forget what it's called. It's a it's percussive thing, and anyway. But that's the story. Yeah, Brian. All access with Danny Zalesko and Tim Richards.